good afternoon good afternoon all the faculty members scholars and students wish you all a heartiest thanks for your presence in today's session i dr nirmal mallik on behalf of the department of electrical engineering dumka engineering college welcome you all in day 3 in this 3 day online seminar at first i would like to thank the respected authorities of techno india group and my colleagues in dumkanjin college now i would like to request professor pankaj sarkar sir our hod of the electrical engineering department to tell something sir please okay. so uh, uh, good morning uh, good afternoon sir and good afternoon uh, respected uh, avishek pal sir who is the resource person for today's program so uh, this is our immense immense pleasure that today we are getting the opportunity to learn something from a resource person from uh, the institute and uh, this is uh, our third uh, day and the last day event for the topic of national webinar on cutting edge technology of electrical engineering so we had already conducted two days webinar in the last 11th 10th and 11th and this is the last day so hope this will be the very interactive and very nice session for all the participants those who are present here from the different parts of the country and i hope a very best of luck for the event so and i am very thankful to the, the all the staffs of the dumka engineering college and all the staffs of and the faculties and staffs of electrical engineering for organizing this wonderful event so without taking much more time i would request uh, our coordinator nimalle sir to please continue the program thank you sir thank you sir now i would like to welcome our keynote speaker for day 3 dr abhishek pal sir assistant professor department of eni thapar institute of engineering and tech patiala india sir we are very much thankful to you now let's look into the educational journey of dr abhishek pal sir dr abhishek pal is currently working as an assistant professor in the department of electrical and instrumentation engineering Upper Institute of Engineering and Technology, Patiala, India. He obtained his bachelor degree in electrical engineering from BIUT, WBUT, West Bengal, India, in 2010, and the MTech degree in power electronics and drives from Jalpaiguri Government Engineering College of West Bengal, India, in 2012. From July 2012 to August 2014, he was associated with Electrical Engineering Department. as an assistant professor at bengal college of engineering formerly known as bcetw durgapur is bengal dr pal sir obtained his phd in 2021 from the iit dhanbad from february 2021 to august 2021 he was working as a senior research fellow under a project entitled development of energy efficient control scheme for in induction motor drive used in ev and hgv sponsored by the department of heavy industries dhi in collaboration with mahindra and mahindra limited his current research interest include power electronics motor drives and electric vehicles now before handing over the session to dr pal sir i would like to inform all the participants that a link for the attendance will be shared any time in between the session now avi dr pal sir please you may continue am i audible first of all yes sir yes sir you are audible am i audible yes sir okay okay so uh, thank you for the introduction um, good uh, evening uh, sorry good afternoon everyone i am so glad to have the opportunity to, to present my work in front of you i uh, want the session to be interactive um, therefore my request to everyone to ask questions queries and give feedbacks so your valuable feedback is very important for me so that i can improve my work in future as well so uh, i just want to share my slide let me uh 
okay so <clears throat> a topic is an energy management study on induction motor driven electric vehicles so from the topic it is realized that uh, today's discussion will be on the induction motor energy management for electric vehicle applications so we will see how we can manage or control the energy of an induction motor we can get the better efficiency from the existing system or the same system which are used in electric vehicles or industries so thus the topic is very interesting as well as a uh, very important aspect of induction motor driven system such as ev not for all the evs but those are used induction motors in electric cars so the primary fo focus of the discussion is how we can improve the efficiency of induction motor at particular cases or conditions so discussion of electric vehicle is not much in this topic but uh, how this discussion will be beneficial for electric vehicles that one can understand after the completing of this sessions so before studying energy management one must understand whether energy management is really required or not what are the efficiency of induction motor drive in which application it is required whether it has social benefits or impact that we need to know all these things okay because when we dealing with energy management so there would be it is obvious that there would be a uh, impact in the, uh, in uh, global energy savings and there would be definitely a societal benefits so uh, if i able to improve uh, the efficiency even by 1% then it's a huge societal benefits so we um, that is uh, the fact we can't deny from this but being an engineer we should look into the other factors like cost involvement uh, when you develop this type of strategy for energy management of such drive system then we we must look into this fact that uh, how much cost is involved to to uh, manage the energy next is uh, obvious factor is stability reliability then how much time i have involved in this matter how much uh, how how whether uh, this is uh, really needed or not huh? this is most important fact so there is lots of effort we, we must in, invest for uh, improvements of uh, efficiency of in such drive so uh, we, we need to uh, look into these factors uh before uh, improving uh, some things okay so uh, uh, so I, uh, coming to the next slide these are the uh, presentation outline uh, and uh, uh, i will discuss in details uh, all these things in the coming slides so during the presentation i will primarily focus on the basic concept of energy efficient control scheme or energy optimization strategy then its operation then its design and real time implementation in uh, induction motor drive that i also and um, it is to be noted that efficiency optimization strategy is achieved by induction motor uh, uh, losses so uh, basically we in, in, in we'll see how we can minimize the losses to get the better efficiency or you can say to manage or handle the energy so consequently the phases like energy management uh, energy efficient uh, efficiency optimization loss minimization are synonymously used uh, in this presentation and uh, at the end i will show few results a simulation as well as experimental results 
and uh, i will discuss uh, some uh, I, i will analyze the result as well okay so uh, so coming to the next slide so before we uh, uh, okay let's understand this slide first okay before deep into the Uh, the topic okay so um, so uh, i just uh, ask myself a uh, couple of questions uh, why ev why electric vehicles why we should replace the conventional uh, ic engine based vehicle the first thought came into my mind is that uh, in ev uh, there is no greenhouse uh, gases there is no, no air pollution no carbon footprint no global warming and if it is environment friendly there is no noise so uh, faster operation uh, fast speed control is can be achieved uh, uh, over the conventional ic uh, um, uh, ic engines okay so uh, these are the fact uh, immediately came in our mind but all this fact are true whether uh, it is not produce any greenhouse gas effect there is no carbon footprint like that Le to understand these things uh, i consider this picture whatever whatever presenting right now in this slide so this picture is a comparison uh, comparison on energy needed and co2 emission between internal combustion engine that is ic engine and the electric vehicles so at the topmost figure here uh, it is uh, uh, clear that uh, the ic engine um, based vehicles uh, for 100 km of trip and if it is uh, its mileage is 16 km uh, per liter then it will require about uh 59 kilowatt hour of energy and in the other hand uh, for electric vehicles uh for the same range to cover the same range it will require 20 kilowatt of energy uh, kilowatt hour of energy so now a uh, question is uh, coming and then from where um we uh, got this figure Um, that means uh, where from i calculate the 20 kilowatt hour uh, energy is required for uh, electric vehicles so to un uh, to to uh, understand these things uh, uh, we must uh, understand where from the electric electric vehicles uh, get the energy to uh, to to uh, store its charge in batteries so obvious uh, that uh, came from some uh, power plant that power plant may be coal power plant that is thermal power plant or maybe uh, gas turbine plants or maybe it came from the renewable sources okay that means maybe um, wind solar like that or maybe other sources like nuclear so uh, there are four categories i have uh, highlighted here four cases basically so coal based generation first one second one is gas based generation third one is basically the combination of all things that is u electrical that is mix of of uh, the renewable coal gases like that okay third picture and fourth one is i have only uh, considered the wind and pv systems so in this cases uh, if uh, all these cases okay we seen from uh, the figure that is energy uses by the ev uh, is better compared to the internal combustion engine uh, there is no surprise in this figure but uh, most of the cases except the coal energy so in case of coal energy it 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 will uh, require is uh, a uh, much much amount of uh, energy to produce the uh, um, uh, electrical energy so so at that cases the um, co2 emissions uh, for the coal uh, power plant is 25 kilo kg so it is uh, higher uh, if you compare with the internal combustion engine which is basically 
um, used uh, uh, diesel, petrol, or gasolines like uh, CNG in gases. So, so uh, if we uh, uh, think uh, that our our power is uh, coming from the only the coal sources, then uh, if we uh, if we um, convert that power uh, to uh, to uh, um, for uh, for for uh, use purpose in electric vehicles, then uh, it is uh, not a good option. But uh, if we think other options, uh, uh, except the coal power plant, that is uh, renewable sources and uh, gas gas plant as well, and other um, combination of all these things, then it will be better because. Uh, there is a uh, carbon footprint is uh, reduces uh, say combined uh, gas turbine plant okay and other other uh, other cases like uh, nuclear renewable uh, cases so all these cases co2 emission is reduces so uh, so uh, uh, if we think like that that uh, if he, there is no uh, uh, co2 emission there is no no uh, uh, environmental impact then uh, then uh, this would be uh, this if you answer like that then it, it will be not uh, it is not justified it is not true uh, in real scenario so what i am trying to say is that uh, from this figure that uh, electric vehicles uh, also have some co2 emissions so it depends on uh, uh, whether we are getting the power from which type of uh, sources, that is coal, whether it is coal or gas or re renewables. So, uh, so that is the uh, thing. I, I, I must uh, first tell all of you before we talk to, so much talking about electric vehicles nowadays. So, uh, so that is the thing. And another important thing that I have missed in this uh, picture that is um, when we uh, uh, develop uh, the batteries. Uh, that times a battery during the battery production there is a uh, consumption of electrical energy as well as uh, there is a huge amount of CO two emissions where the battery is manufactured in the industries. So, so that that should we uh, taken care uh, in in case of electric vehicles because uh, 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 obviously uh, a battery is the one of the major part of electric vehicles so so th this is the thing um, when we are talking about the electric vehicles then how uh, whether um, uh, whatever its life cycle we must we must uh, consider okay so uh, before uh, uh, once electric vehicle is uh, just produced, it is not, uh, uh, let's say it is not uh, uh, buy by someone else. At, at that time, it's also uh, uh, develop some CO2 emissions. Okay, uh, so uh, during its uh, battery production. So uh, th that things we must consider. So this is one slide. I think it is very important to understand whether we used IC engine vehicle or electric vehicles. So uh, you can uh, we can uh, have some understanding about how much uh, energy is needed by the uh, uh, IC engine as well as the uh, electric vehicles and how much is the CA2 emissions. So th this is not uh, actually my uh, discussion of this topic, but uh, every one should understand this fact clearly. So uh, I come into the next part of my uh, topic that is um, uh, how, why, where uh, and how we can manage the energy, where uh, in, uh, energy management is needed all these things are coming to the uh, these slides from these slides okay so uh, i have used uh, uh, very beginning uh, the topic i have chosen the induction motor driven electric vehicles 
that means the electric vehicle those electric vehicles are use the induction motor so i am talking about that kind of vehicles and uh, how i improve the efficiency of that particular vehicles so first uh, why we consider uh, induction motor uh, instead of other motors uh, because induction motor structure if we look in this structure is very reliable it is rigid in structure it is uh, cost effective because uh, square rail induction motor is uh, widely used and its cost is uh, very uh, less compared to uh, other machines like uh, your dc machines or you can say pm motor uh, permanent magnetic synchronous machines so it is uh, in in that respect it is uh, effective induction motor moreover induction motor does not require any real uh, sorry rear wrap material so uh, that is uh, one of the advantage of induction motors so uh, and there is other factors and there are lots of application in the induction motor not only in electric vehicles so uh, these are the different application robotics subway mills textiles and pumps there is lots of wind generations there is uh, numerous application you may find it in uh, the uh, different areas so uh, that is the that's why induction motor is uh, very popular and many many companies like mahindra mahindra uh, and uh, tesla also use the induction motor uh, in electric vehicles so here i have uh, got the data from mahindra electric Uh, they have they use uh, induction motor in different cars that is e2 uh, o plus e verito and e supra van so they use three phase induction motor and these are the specifications now uh, why induction motor why not the other motor dc motor pm motor or srm motor so uh, in this slide there is a comparison of all these motors uh so if we use the same power rating of machines a dc machine a induction machines a permanent magnet motor and a switch reluctant motor so if we compare uh with uh, power density efficiency controllability reliability and technical maturity and cost then we find that induction motor have uh, if uh, to totally induction motor have better compared to um, uh, better points compared to the other machines so that's that is the thing that's why we can uh, take induction motor uh, for electric vehicles propulsion systems however the power density and efficiency is uh, less compared to the permanent magnet mo motors and uh, um, that is the thing so uh, so produce high energy or high amount of uh, power uh, induction motor size should be bigger compared to the pm motor that is that is the one uh, disadvantage if we consider the induction motor uh, in propulsion system so so that is the uh, one problem one issue okay so uh, Uh, now i just uh, uh, want to discuss uh, the why induction why the efficiency improvement or efficiency management or efficiency control is required in induction motor so so uh, in this slide there is a uh, if we look into the first curve that is uh, uh, time versus the vehicle speed curve so here you can find Uh, a modified indian drive cycle and uh, this is the power requirement so uh, at different stages so uh, it is shown in uh, percentage form so uh, here, here you can find when uh, at this positions at, at at this slope okay when machine is um, accelerating okay the uh, basically vehicle is accelerating at the time it's uh, require maximum 50% of its energy that means um, uh, it is not going to use the uh, full capacity of the machine 
So here the induction motor is used is 30 kilowatt of induction motor. Um, so this is the real time study. And I, this data I got from the Mohindra and Mohindra Electric. So who, this data um, uh, depicts that the machines, the machine is always operated uh, uh, at maximum of 50% uh, um, energies. That means um, in maximum 50% of uh, its power rating, not, not energy, sorry for its power rating. That means if it is a 30 kilowatt of induction motor, then only 15 kilowatt is used and other 15 kilowatt is not, not used. So that is the thing. And the second second uh, graph, it is clearly uh, de depicts the, uh, what is the power requirement at different uh, cases. So oh, when, uh, so it's maximum power, uh, is reach about uh, 15 kilowatt at these cases, at these conditions. So a th 30 kilowatt of induction machines uh, only uses 15 kilowatt um, is practical applications. So that means um, um, its power requirement never exceeds, exceed about, uh, if we're talking about the power unit value, then no, not more than the half Per unit or 0.5 per, per unit. So this is the uh, this is the fact that means machine is not fully utilized. So in these cases, uh, the in efficiency uh, we um, uh, studied at different point. What would be the what is the efficiency of this drive? So we have uh, seen that is varies from 30 to 70 percent when open operates at uh, maximum power. That means uh, here 0.5 unit, or you can say 15 kilowatt when it's uh, used at 15 kilowatt level, then the efficiency is 75% or 70% like that. And it's uh, fall to about 30% in this range. So that means when machine is, uh, machine's uh, uh, efficiency is 30%, then other 70% is completely losses, loss should be, I mean, that is, waste of energy okay so uh, from uh, this uh, these two pictures we can have some idea the why we need a energy management study so uh, so other uh, there is some other characteristics uh, i have shown in the slide uh, uh, of uh, induction motor at different cases like efficiency versus rated loads so from this picture, this first first figure, from first figure, it is clear that when is ma machine is operated at light load condition, that is, uh, uh, its power when its power rating is about uh, twenty five percent around, then efficiency is very poor. Its efficiency is uh, very less. So uh, that is uh, when machine is basically operated at light load or. Um, uh, less than is 25% uh, of rated load. So that cases the efficiency of induction motor is very poor. So uh, again, efficiency versus another uh, uh, figure is so, second figure is shows the efficiency versus the uh, speed curve. So when speed also very, when machine is operated at low speed, then also the efficiency is very poor. So uh, that is uh, the major problem in induction motor. When induction motor is operated at light load and uh, low speed of low speed condition, then efficiency of motor is very poor. And coming uh, to uh, to uh, understand uh, in a great way, I have taken one example, um, a, a schematic. Uh, a general schematic of electric vehicle system. So I can find there is a battery pack, converters, induction motor, and load. And uh, there is a sensing unit to sense its current voltage, everything, uh, speed as well, the speed as well. And it will, uh, the sensing unit, uh, whatever uh, the dat data is acquired, it's uh, feedback to, uh, to the control unit. 
and continually give give the command to the converters to uh, operate uh, different uh, conditions as, as demanded by the load as well as uh, by by the users so this is the general schematic so here uh, we can find that the converter efficiency is uh, 95 to 98% and if the machine induction machines is operated at rated speed and rated load condition, then efficiency of such type of motor is about 80 to 85 percent. So overall efficiency of this drive system is about 70 to 75 percent. But uh, if we're talking um, uh, as such condition, uh, when the machine speed is about 25% 20, of rated speed and it's load also the 25% uh, of the rated load torque. Then the efficiency of such machine is reduces to 30 to 35%. And that time the overall efficiency is reduces up to 25% to 28%. However, the converter efficiency is intact it is about 95 to 98% is around that, that much so so when machine is operated at uh, uh, full load condition then efficiency is very good it is uh, very very good uh, i must say but when this machines operated at light load conditions or low speed condition then efficiency is very poor so uh, that means um, if such type of machine is used in electric vehicles, then um, uh, we can find that uh, ba battery that is um, um, used uh, uh, for uh, for the source of this en energy of uh, all for these machines uh, will be um, waste by basically waste by the most of the time on the to cater the losses the battery uh, give all the energy to cater the losses and uh, uh, in industry we find that uh, uh, motor always choose for particular application is oversized motor or overrated motor if we require say uh, 30 kilowatt of induction motor uh, 30 kilo kilowatt of uh, to generate a 30 kilowatt of um, to drive a 30 kilowatt of load we uh, use 50 kilowatt of um, uh, machines for safety purpose. Okay, so that means machine always we uh, consider is oversized motor, oversized machines. Okay, for safety purpose. So machine never operates at full load conditions in, in practically in practical scenario. Okay, so so that is the uh, that is the thing. That means machine always operate derated conditions. And deleted condition, the losses of such type of machine in induction machine, machine is very high. So to to cater these losses, uh, uh, battery, uh, a yeah, huge amount of uh, battery pack is required to uh, to uh, to drive uh, one point to another point like that. So so that is a practical problem for induction motor driven EVs. So in this case, we can consider such such te techniques to to minimize these losses. So that is the idea behind uh, today's discussions. So so basically, um, induction motor is uh, 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 the primary component. Okay, in a in a drive system for. Uh, provide the poor efficiency okay of the overall drive at light load conditions and this hard reality actually demands the uh, efficiency management control or efficiency optimized control like that okay so so we so basically here we add some technique so that we can the efficiency uh, sorry is minimize the losses and maximize the efficiency Okay, so uh, we, we already studied the induction motor characteristics. So at light load conditions, we know which losses is dom dominating in induction motor, that is cold loss. So if we try to minimize the cold loss, then we can 
improve the efficiency. That is the idea. So here, uh, the concept of implementation uh, such that we try to minimize the coal loss and we will improve the efficiency. So here we, uh, we have taken a, uh, machines and uh, uh, these uh, uh, machines operate at particular speed and particular torque conditions, okay? Consider the machine is operated at a dedated condition. That means light, load, light, low speed condition. So at that time, so uh, this y-axis basically represent the flux, machine flux and, uh, sorry, x-axis. And y-axis represent the different curve like loss, efficiency, speed and torque. So at this point, I have considered, um, uh, this is the rate, uh, rated flux point. That means machine is now, op if machine is operated at rated flux, then this is the uh, uh, efficiency, this is the loss, total loss, this is, this is, that is the coal loss, that this is that amount of coal loss, and this is the copper loss and the converter losses of the whole drive system. Now, if I try to minimize the um, flux and I reduce this flux in uh, these directions, okay? So here the flux is uh, machine flux at, at rated condition. Now from the rated, I, um, um, I try to minimize the flux, okay, flux value, okay, from rated to derated uh, cases. So flux is minimized in this direction. If we minimize the flux, then uh, the coal loss, okay, coal loss is reduced drastically, okay? And oh, we can observe the, the overall losses of the system is also reduced. So however, the converter losses and copper losses are increased, okay? But th that is not a significant amount, but uh, coal losses is significantly reduced. That is that is the thing. So uh, if we if we reduce further these losses, uh, sorry, uh, flux value, then at some point we can uh, achieve that coal loss is uh, uh, such a value that uh, coal loss is equals to your copper loss plus converter loss, so that the overall losses is minimum at the, that point and. Uh, Efficiency obviously at that point is very high. Okay, efficiency is maximum. Loss is minimum and efficiency obviously if the loss is, if, we, if the loss is minimum then efficiency obviously maximum. But machine is operated at steady condition. That means we are not um, disturb the output of the machines. Output means speed and torque uh, of the machine is constant, remains constant. So at, at that cases, we find uh, uh, this type of uh, characteristics of the machine. If we further reduce the flux value, then uh, again, we can uh, see that uh, coal losses is minimized, but, but the copper and converter losses uh, that time is very huge and efficiency, uh, efficiency uh, reduces and losses further increases. So, uh, so basically to operate a um, highest efficiency or maximum efficiency, drive must operate a optimum value of flux. So that means uh, as a scenario, uh, we need to determine this, com this component. Okay, this point actually, this flux point. So that the efficiency of the drive system would be maximum and losses would be minimum. So we need to identify that point, that that particular flux value for particular speed and torque conditions, so that we can improve the efficiency. That is the idea. So to implement this idea, there are there are lots of method to implement. Okay, and uh, uh, I am just briefly discuss about uh, these things. What are the methods available uh, in literature? And uh, and I will show one uh, method how I can implement uh, we can implement these things in uh, real time. 
so this type of strategy we call the efficiency optimization strategy so this what this efficiency optimization strategy does it will basically uh, uh, find the optimum flux point so and uh, and it will improve the uh, efficiency of the drive system so objective is to uh, objective is basically of this strategy to find out the optimum and minimum losses of the systems so th there are two types one is offline strategy another is online strategy again online strategy is uh, uh, is based on loss model control scheme that is lmc one is harch control based sc and hybrid that is combination of both the lmc and sc schemes so this these are the three a uh, scheme i mean a real time scheme is available in literature so among of uh, uh, these the sc scheme that is uh, search control scheme is uh, very popular because uh, the way to uh, find out its optimum value uh, is based on the mathematical approach so it is very easy to implement and um, we can achieve uh, the optimum value through this method but the other method is quite complicated and uh, in lmc uh, there is a major uh, problem is we can't achieve the optimum point however the lmc is uh, faster compared to the sc method sc method is basically iterative iterative method so it will take some time to converge to the optimum point so uh, that is the thing now um, this thing is implemented in uh, um, in the control loop that means um, induction motor drive so so if we look at the drive system then uh, drive system must contain one motor that is here an induction motor some sources here sources is battery energy source is battery then uh, to control the speed and torque uh, speed of these machines we need a um, control converter so that we can uh, control the frequency and voltage accordingly so we need a inverter so the, we consider here a two level of voltage source inverter and uh, to control uh, the machine speed accurately we need some feedback that is current feedback voltage feedback speed feedback like that so so there is uh, this feedback signal we need no, need to sense by the sensor and fed to the control algorithm so this control algorithm is developed uh, in a, a microcontroller based uh, uh, controller my, it may be microcontroller it may be dsp modern dsp processor or maybe fpga type of processor like that so why do we can implement the control algorithm or control strategy i mean and induction uh, for the speed control of induction motor drive there are lots of control techniques available like direct torque control uh, field oriented control like that so uh, that, that, that is the uh, another part of discussion so we am not going to discuss all these things but uh, here we, we are interested in particularly efficiency optimization strategy so uh, so this this efficiency optimization strategy also implement uh, also implement in the control algorithms okay so so that uh, we need need not require any additional hardware set uh, hardware circuit and in the existing drive system that is used in electric vehicles let's say for electric vehicle or you may say for the industry Uh, then uh, the, there is a, some control um, uh, controller digital controller are there so where why do we can simply modify the algorithm uh, to get the better efficiency that is the idea without modifying any other things any other hardware circuitry that is the idea so um, so in literature uh, uh, there are different uh, uh, strategy available for uh, loss the first uh, these things are basically loss model control technique and later strategy are basically search control based technique and this strategy are basically hybrid control so combination of search control and 
uh, LMC control, loss model control. So here uh, in this table, basically we are uh, going to see uh, what are the different indices uh, based on these are classified or uh, we can say, com we can compare. So, so here uh, we, we can compare by uh, in terms of improvement, how much efficiency improved or how much loss is reduced. And th that is the, that, that are shown here. And second uh, uh, things is on the convergence time. So convergence time for the LMC method is quite uh, less compared to the search control method. And say, and the later part is, uh, it shows the machine's ratings and it is the parameter, uh, parameter sensitivity. So um, whether the scheme is parameter sensitivity, parameter sensitive or not. So when you implement something, so uh, then we must look into uh, about uh, the stability of the system, uh, re uh, reliability of the system, whether uh, the uh, that, that, that particular scheme is uh, effective, affected with the machine parameter or not, that we, we need to study. So here the in LMC, the, this method are the parameter sensitive. So that is, uh, the, that's why it is, uh, uh, implementation is a bit uh, difficult and it is no, not uh, accurate okay so uh, the, so I, I i have considered one uh, search control based scheme uh, to to improve the efficiency now i'm going to discuss these things how we can improve the efficiency of um, induction motor drive so i have uh, considered one algorithm for uh, efficiency improvement purpose, that is uh, adaptive quadratic interpolation. So basically, this quadratic interpolation uh, is a method and is very useful and efficient method for solving the optimization problem. So here in this figure, we need to minimize this curve. That is, if we look at this figure, so here, you can see two curves, one is dotted curve, one is farm curve. So farm curve, let's say this is your actual uh, actual um, characteristics of um, machine losses or let's say input power. Okay, so, so here basically I used uh, input power as a uh, function that I try to minimize. Okay, so basically, uh, what is efficiency? Efficiency is basically output by input. So output power by input power. So that is the efficiency, right? So if I minimize the input power requirement, then we can we can also claim that the efficiency is improved. Another way, okay. We can say the if we minimize the losses, then efficiency is improved. And we, another way you can say if I uh, maintaining the output power constant, if I minimize the input power, then also efficiency will improve, right? So, uh, so that is the idea. So I, I have, uh, uh, I have considered here the input power um, of, uh, and input power should be minimized. Okay. So here I have considered a quadratic curve. And uh, this uh, this uh, curve, uh, we need to find out what is the minimum point. Okay, so this I try to find uh, try to find out. So so uh, this is actually uh, this curve is not in in my hand. I I can imagine. Hmm. So practically, this curve is uh, not not available. So I I try to. Uh, um, extrapolate this type of curve to get the minimum point. So that is the idea. So we can approximate this function, this quadratic uh, second degree polynomial, say parabola. Okay. So if, if we uh, uh, approximate uh, this uh, with a quadratic function, then quadratic function is basically why we choose the quadratic function is uh, it is very easy to handle. Okay, and we can uh, get uh, uh, optimum very easily, and it is very efficient way to solve the optimization problem. That's why I've taken the 
uh, this type of functions okay so uh, so we will uh, uh, going to minimum the quadratic function uh, in uh, this quadratic function that is small p id ids instead of the capital p ids uh, how are you going to solve uh, this one so if i uh, write the expression for this quadratic function then this is the expressions okay for the quadratic functions and um, so initially we consider three base point that is ids 0 ids 1 and 2 and uh, with this value we can inter interpolate the function okay so basically here i have um, used the extra extrapolation method uh, and, and uh, I try to get this kind of dotted curve, okay? And uh, I try to find out the minimum point of this curve first. So what is the minimum point of this curve? If I, uh, if it's a single derivative equals to zero, then it would be the minimum point. And what would be the necessary condition uh, uh, and uh, essential condition? So. Uh, the, the the essential condition is that the uh, double derivative of this expression first expression must be greater than zero so uh, so from from uh, uh, these things uh, we can get the minimum value if double derivative is greater than zero that means we can say this is the minimum point and only only when uh, this minimum point is very close to the minimum point of this curve hmm. uh, this point uh, the minimum of this curve this curve is uh, ids star and the minimum of the dotted curve is ids m if these two points are very close then only we can say that uh, we uh, achieve the minimum point Otherwise, we, we can't claim. So basically, and the idea of quadratic interpolation method is that uh, instead of capital P ideas, we will minimize the small P ideas and we will check if the idea star is the minimum value of the solid curve, where the idea is the optimum solution of the polynomial. Uh, that is small p ideas. These are very close. That means idea star and ideas is very close. And uh, necessary and sufficient condition if fulfilled, then we can say we achieve the minimum point. So um, idea of this type of method is basically line search technique is initially uh, the uh, we know the interval. That means initial interval is given to us. So we can select the value of ideas 0, ideas 1, and ideas 2. So what is ideas 0, ideas 1, and ideas 2? That, that are the flux component of current. Okay. So we basically try to uh, get the optimum value of the flux component of the current. So, um, uh, so if we try to get this optimum value, hmm, that means uh, this ideas star or ideas m, uh, that is in this expression 3. Then, uh, then we can say uh, we achieve the minimum uh, point of the car, and that time the power uh, power requirement of the machine will be uh, minimum that we can claim at that particular flux value. So that is the idea uh, behind the implementation of uh, this type of method. Okay. So uh, why I have implemented this? So these are the uh, this is the, um, the slide where I so where I implement these things. So I have implemented uh, this scheme in a field oriented control induction motor drive. So field oriented con this is the structure of uh, indirect field oriented control of induction motor drive. So used in electric vehicle. So, uh, so and uh, the control scheme is basically developed in synchronously rotating reference frame with two current sensors only that is ia and ip okay and um, uh, the efficiency optimization strategy is basically this is the efficiency optimization strategy is 
integrated in the flux loop of the control scheme okay to decide the optimum flux component of the current value that is the basically the flux value okay so um, based on that the input power based on the input power measurement so how are we going to measure the input power of the drive system from the deceiling voltage and deceiling current we measure the input power and from i use the, the input power to estimate the actual value of oh, sorry optimum value of the flux component of current or flux value and that i have feedback to the uh, feedback to the uh, control scheme okay and in this way we can control the um, machines in efficient way so so uh, this is the whole control scheme to achieve the um, better efficiency or maximum we can say uh, improve efficiency in the drive system so uh, uh, here one uh, speed controller uh, speed uh, feedback is also used this is the speed encoder so there by the uh, close close loop uh, of the control system so uh, this is the basic control strategy so i not discuss diff of all, all all this part okay this would be uh, discussion will be very fast otherwise so this scheme is uh, developed i have developed in matlab simulating and later i have implemented in a harder platform so uh, this uh, these are the machine machine rating and machine parameter i have considered in table 1 this is depicted so machine power is 2.2 kilowatt machine machine sap torque is 40 newton meter and uh, this is the line voltage this is three phase induction motor and number of pole is four so these are the machine inductance resistance and the other parameters and these are the speed controller and current controller gain so so in this slide i have shown this is the induction motor the parameter i have shown and the pi value i have mentioned here this is the pi value okay to implement the schemes so now coming to the result part so this is the some simulations results i have uh, want to show if, to you that is uh, machine is operated say let's say at a speed of uh, 30 radian per second with a load torque of 2 newton meter so this is the uh, speed response so figure a shows the speed response okay so uh, uh, so here uh, figure a basically demonstrated accurate speed tracking performance even after the efficiency optimization strategies in force so basically efficiency optimization strategies strategy that is what uh, we have implemented uh, in uh, uh, in the model okay so that is verified through the simulation results so different different uh, conditions uh, different sets of speed different sets of load we have studied so here um, um, one set of result i have shown to you and uh, i all uh, so uh, as i mentioned that induction motor offers poor efficiency at light load condition so that's why i considered load is about 15% of the retail load torque that is we yeah, have 2 2 newton meter about 2 newton meter so uh, in this figure uh, um, uh, it is so shows that first 5 second machine is operated at rated flux condition and um, after 5 second i enabled the efficiency optimization strategy okay so from the from 5 second machine will operate under efficiency optimized con conditions so uh, that time what will happen machines um, input power consumption will reduced and uh, efficiency will improve so uh, but load torque and speed remains constant throughout the operation so here at 5 second efficiency optimization is enabled but speed is uh, uh, constant even after the activation of the uh, us 
okay if you see the optimization strategy so in figure b it shows the substantial reduction in the flux component of stator current so this is your stator current so this is the rated uh, flux current uh, amount that is 3.8 ampere almost and when the efficiency optimization strategy is enforced at 5 second then the flux is reduced okay flux com component of current and this this is the time to converge the algorithm and at this point um, uh, when it is converged then uh, this is the optimum uh, flux value whatever we we are getting okay so so uh, figure c actually uh, uh, depicts the rotor flux orientation which which also accurately maintained throughout the drives operations and uh the minimization in the flux level leads to uh, leads to reduction in the losses by 17 watt they uh, thereby uh, uh, reducing the input power consumption uh, is about 19.4% uh, and the overall efficiency is improved by 20.24% 20 and that can be seen from the figure d this is the input power requirement so when machine is operated at rated condition that is the input power requirement and when machine is operated at optimum flux conditions that means when efficiency improvement algorithm is enabled then this is the input power consumption so input power is reduced that means efficiency is improved so um, that is the thing so overall drive system efficiency is 24 percent that we can achieve so from this result so another sets of result i have uh, shown in this slide that is when machine is operated at indian modified indian drive cycle so this is the drive cycle so uh, figure uh, a basically demonstrate the smooth speed tracking performance of the drive uh, for the entire duration of the operation and uh, figure b basically shows the corresponding power profile so initially machine is tested for rated flux operation the average energy consumption during the rated flux operation is uh, 3680 joules and when machine is uh, operated on the optimized flux condition then the power consumption is reduced and as well as the energy consumption that means energy what we uh, uh get that time that is energy requirement is only about 3057 joules so there is an energy savings of 623 joules for uh this duration one means 45 second of duration of the operations so here uh, when machine is operated at rated flux so the power consumption is shown by the black profile and when the machine is uh, operated at uh, efficiency improved um, operation, that means optimized flux operations, that time it is shown by your red uh, profile, red car here, this one. So, so overall efficiency improvement is that much. Okay. And this is the uh, vehicle speed in kilometer per hour. So low speed and low uh, torque, light load condition, I have studied, okay? So uh, now uh, these things I have implemented in uh, hardware. Okay, so I briefly discuss about the hardware setup. So uh, that I, I would like to share with you. The setup is, has been developed in uh, a laboratory and the stage range is consist of voltage source inverter hmm, and um, uh, a controller that is DS1103 uh, uh, controller that is dispatch controller 2.2 kilowatt induction motor coupled uh, squirrel cage induction motor coupled with eddy current brake load. Okay, uh, and uh, this eddy current brake load working as a variable linear load. So one uh, among of them one one of the primary uh, setup is the voltage of uh, voltage source inverter which include the different uh, power circuit, gate driver circuit, signal conditioning card, voltage sensing card, current sensing card, and different protection card. And this module actually designed in the laboratory, okay? 
and uh, for uh, this uh, particular research work. And um, I'll show some parts of this, okay, in the latest slide. And uh, all the PCBs are designed uh, using Portius 8.9 software. And PCB is manufactured by JLC PCB, a one company that is Chinese company. So uh, we have sent the Garber file. They produced, uh, they they, uh, they actually manufactured it, and they sent to us. So the PCB cost is around two hundred USD. Uh, so and all the component I have fabricated in the lab. So this is the actual uh, set of pictures. Okay. So this is your voltage source inverter. This is the induction motor, eddy current load. This is the host PC. This is the and uh, this is the um, basically oscilloscope and power measurement uh, by a digital watt meter. I have measured whether for the verification purpose. So this is the whole setup. So this is the power circuit configuration. So uh, the IGBT switch I have used. This is the rating. And this type of configurations I have used three, uh, uh, three legs uh, are used here. So that is one, two, three, one for the braking purpose. So these are the activities one, two, three, another is brake activity that I have used. So, uh, so this is the things. This is the signal conditioning card. So this is used for basically uh, uh communicating with uh, gate driver circuit and the uh, your controller circuit that is ds1103 and the gate driver circuit of the igbts and uh, this circuit consists of different protection uh, and fault detection circuit as well okay and uh, this work also for the amplification from 5 volt to 15 volt level as well as it, it will provide some dead, dead time, okay, dead band like that. So these are the purpose of these circuits. So uh, uh, we need to, to implement the scheme, we need to sense the current and voltage. So here the current sensor card and this is the voltage sensor card and this is the range. It will uh, uh, measure up to 50 ampere in RMS value and we can uh, measure the voltage uh, about 1000 volt. Uh, through this uh, card uh, that uh, that are the things so with with this uh, i i got some uh, i test all these things and further in experimentally whether um, uh, the simulation work is uh, wh whatever i've studied for validate uh, the uh, things i have further studied in, in this setup in the same environmental conditions, that means same speed sets, that is 30 radian per second, and same uh, low torque pattern, okay, that is two newton meter low torque. And here I observed that uh, flux component current is reduced uh, in similar manner. The rotor flux orientation is intact, um, and the power requirement, requirement. So here, we have seen the power reduction is 18.9% and efficiency improvement is 14.7%. So these are the efficiency improvement. So further I have tested an other speed pattern, trapezoidal speed pattern. So initially machine is operated for first 25 seconds at rated flux conditions. So this is the power profile for first 25 seconds. This is the power consumption and Later, 25, uh, let, later from 25 to 35 seconds, that means later 15, uh, uh, 15 seconds, it's operated at optimized flux condition. So this is the uh, power requirement at this case. So this is the energy savings and efficiency is, is improved in this case also. That, that, that is the things. So uh, uh, next uh, slide demonstrate the a table at uh, different operating conditions at different speed sets and different loading conditions. So what are the energy uh, power requirement at rated condition? This is the 48 watt at 20 radian per second, zero Newton meter. There is no load torque. At that time, the power requirement is 48 watt. And after efficiency optimization algorithm, we achieved the power requirement of 29 watt. 
So power requirement is reduced and this is the percentage of reduction of power requirement. So there is no output uh, at zero Newton meter. That means there is no output. So efficiency we can't calculate. But uh, when uh, load torque is one Newton meter and two Newton meter, there is a efficiency improvement of such percentage we have achieved. So at, at 40 radian per second, at uh, two Newton meter, we achieve about 19.8%. So almost 20% efficiency improvement. So that, that is the things. So how much efficiency we have improved. So further, uh, these results I uh, depicted in uh, uh, and uh, bar form, okay, bar, bar graph format. So here we, we, we have the input, uh, input power versus the speed and uh, different uh, load torque conditions I have shown the first graph. So uh, at uh, dark uh, one of the, this, uh, this, this is at rated flux conditions. So these are the rated flux conditions, power requirement. And uh, the orange one is shows the power requirement at uh, optimized flux conditions. So it is uh, clearly visible that optimized flux condition power requirement is less at different cases. And in, 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 in terms of efficiency improvement and input power reduction, so at different speed and load torque condition, this is the improvement. So this is the efficiency improvement uh, at different cases. And this is basically the input power reduction at different cases as shown. So again, one table is shown uh, for Indian drive cycle. Uh, what would be the uh, efficiency at rated conditions and what would be the efficiency when machine is operated at optimized flux condition. So this is the efficiency at rated flux and this is the for the um, optimized flux condition. So what, where the output power is constant, both the cases but the input energy is different for the both the cases. So these are the things. I again uh, start um, compare uh, the scheme with the other available method. So what I found that the quadratic interpolation method is better compared to other method. That is PO means part of an observed method. GA is basically golden section method. Okay, ramp method, fuzzy logic based method. So there are uh, such improvement here. Efficiency is improved by this method is 12% where this method is uh, GS based method is improved by 39%. Okay, so this is the efficiency improvement. But uh, here, um, uh, the efficiency improved by this method is uh, shown uh, 20 to 26 percent. But if you compare with the convergence time, this convergence time is faster compared to other methods. So that is an, another advantage of using this method. And so it's converged within 0.8 to one second, very faster rate. So, so this algorithm can be used in electric vehicles where the faster dynamic is required. So coming to the conclusion part, so uh, what we have seen uh, from the results and what we have analysis that uh, the efficiency improved uh, by this method is about 20 to 26%. That means at like load conditions, efficiency improvement is basically possible. And uh, if we improve the efficiency, that means uh, there is a huge impact on the society. Okay. So, uh, and global energy savings. And uh, this, this method implementation of such type of method is not uh, very complex. It is very uh, simple method. Okay. It is not complex at all. So we can easily implement um, in the existing drive system by some modification in, in the control algorithm. And this method is only implemented in the flux loop. So easily can be implemented. Okay. So what, what, what this method is actually doing, it is basically optimized whenever we uh, basically it is op optimize the flux value that minimize the cold loss. Okay, minimize the input power consumptions and improve the overall efficiency. 
that is the things and it's convergence time is com is very fast so uh, basically what i am trying to say that as modern culture and technology is continue to develop so deployment of uh, induction motor uh, has increased in many time in different applications including the electric vehicles which um, has uh, including uh, a and this is basically indeed a promising alternative to the traditional transportation system so however the appropriate choice of uh, motors associated drive system uh, selection of optimum control are the key challenges okay so so if we suitably uh, choose all these things then oh, oh, then the electric vehicles is more more efficient compared to the um ic engine based vehicles so oh, we, we we must uh, take in uh, care of uh, the losses in the induction motor uh, and how we can improve the losses that uh, that, that that is the uh, that is the thing i have discussed so uh, basically um, uh, Um, uh, such type of uh, basically induction motors in ev system efficiency management strategy is um, important okay uh, and uh, so the focus of this discussion was how we can improve the efficiency of induction motor drive at light load condition hope i justified um, uh, it okay and uh, thank you um and these are the key references of um, so from here i have studied uh, this topic so these are the references and these are the, uh, publications of under this topic um i thank you everyone for listen the topic quite um uh, quietly so um i uh, conclude here uh, i now uh, ask everyone some everybody to ask few questions queries and give your feedback okay so here i end the sessions um, in the discussion not session sorry thank you dr abhishek pal sir uh, a feedback link for this three day national workshop has been posted in uh, zoom chat box please all of you uh, fill up this form and as well as an attendance link also will be shared within few minutes now if you have any queries any doubts you can ask dr pal sir please and please uh, raise your hand and then we'll unmute you any queries from the participant side okay uh, now i would like to request professor devabodha das sir to conclude this session sir please continue okay uh, so thank you nirmal sir so good evening to the honorable chief guest a respected speaker and respected principal and participant and all my colleagues so myself uh, mr devabodha kumar das department of electrical engineering Tumka Engineering College. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks on this special occasion. So, first of all, on behalf of the entire institute, I would like to thank the Techno India Group to provide us such an opportunity to organize a three-day national event. On behalf of the organizing committee. convey deep regard and heartily thanks to our honorable respected vice chairman sir techno india group professor mohit chatter and heartily thanks to our honorable respected director of global operation techno india group mr meksu chatter and sustainability director techno india group ms pauline garaj also our beloved honorable respected 
deputy director techno india group at uh, dr sudeep chakra so they supported in all possible manner to organize this conference so on behalf of the entire institute i would like to thank our keynote speaker for day 3 dr abhishek paul so today the session is very fruitful for us on the three day national level workshop on cutting edge technologies for electrical engineers so the objective of this workshop is to present cutting edge technology in electrical engineer the research area are diverse as computer and communication network electronic circuits and system uh, laser and photonic semiconductor and solid state devices nano electronic so biomedical engineering computational method artificial intelligence so there are lots of area we have to calculate and also power and energy systems and also have been presented a sufficient depth to provide the students the basic theory as well as insight into application the approach is designed to develop the thinking process in the student enabling them to reach a sound understanding of a broad range of topics related to electrical engineering while motivating their interest in the electrical power industry our sincere thanks to respected principal sir of dumka engineering college professor ratan kumar ghosh thanks sir to help us in obtaining the necessary administrative approval for organizing the event i would like to thank our beloved head of the department professor pankaj sarkar sir so words are not enough to thank their constant guidance and support to save the seminar and also i want to express my heartfelt gratitude to dr nirmal mullik sir coordinator of such a wonderful session i would like to thank the bottom of my heart to all faculties and staff of department of electrical engineering without their help it is not possible to arrange this event so finally my heartiest thanks to all active participants for their presence throughout the session and one information a feedback link is provided in the chat box and so please everyone fill this feedback form and within uh, some days uh, the certificate will be generated so thank you so uh, over to you uh, dr nirmal namolik sir sir please thank you dr uh, thank you professor devo das sir now this attendance link as well as feedback form is very much important to obtain a certificate now uh, professor abhishek pal sir uh, from our department uh, department of electrical engineering dumka engineering college we would like to share a small moment virtually is it visible sir yeah yes sure sure it is visible thank you sir uh, thank you very much now uh, i would like to request uh, professor raju goswami sir to conclude this uh, three day national workshop and to present a validatory session uh, professor goswami sir thank you nirmal sir so the session is very useful for us on the it is national level workshop on cutting edge technologies for electrical engineer cutting edge technology refers to technological devices techniques or achievements that employ the most current and high level it developments in other words technology at the frontiers of knowledge leading an innovative it industry organizations are often referred to as cutting edge cutting edge is also known as leading edge technology or state of the art technology 
on behalf on the entire institute i would like to thanks our keynote speaker for day 1 dr saurabh dast sir uh, day 2 dr rohit babu sir and day 3 dr obhishek pal sir the end of the story is the new beginning for many others on this note let's conclude our remarkable memorable and knowledgeable valedictory session on behalf of the institution we sincerely thank the dignitaries for all, uh, for being with us this evening and enlightening us with their enthusiastic remarks i show our my heartfelt gratitude to the professor and every one of the family of dumka engineering college for their whole hearted support rendered in uh, the success of this valedictory session thank you very much uh, have a wonderful and fun filled evening i requested to all of you please switch on your video to take a attendance snapshot please everyone turn on your video and attendance link and feedback link both are given already a snapshot will be taken so please all of you turn on your video onko sir please uh, take this snapshot sir okay sir so first of all let all the participants uh, turn on their video to take a snapshot all the participants those who are present here are, are again requested to please turn on your video to take a snapshot all the participants please turn on the video and don't turn off your video until and unless we communicate please hold on Okay, so thank you everybody. You now you can turn off your video. Thank, thank you everybody. everyone for being with us in this such wonderful journey of this three uh, day national level workshop. So thank you, thank you uh, all the colleagues of the department. Thank you, Vishak Pal sir, Dr. Vishak Pal sir. Thank you, Professor Pankaj Sarkar sir, Dr. Das sir, and Professor Ajay Goshami sir. So thank you, Vishak Pal sir, for uh, giving this uh, wonderful. session of 2 hours on this particular domain i hope this session is very fruitful and very intra very intra very interesting and very memorable moment for all the participants those who are present here from different uh, different uh, institutions or different industries so hope in future also we, uh, we our department gets and our institute gets the opportunity from you to learn something 
which will help the students as well as the society. So thank you, Abhishek Pal sir. Thank you very much for giving, for exhibiting your knowledge on this particular domain and sharing your knowledge on this particular domain with all the participants, those who are present here. Thank you very much. And thank you all the participants, those who are present, giving their precious time for this uh, webinar. So as communicated to you, please uh, fill up the feedback link. And after fill up the feedback link, you will be provided an e-certificate link. And after that, uh, e-certificate will be generated in your respected email ID. So hope in future, uh, very soon, we will again meet on a new webinar conducted by the Department of Electrical Engineering of the Dumka Engineering College. So best of luck to everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. And thank you, Devapata sir. Thank you, Nirmala sir. Thank you, Raju Goswami sir. Thank you, Rahul sir. Thank you, Saptasi sir. And all the staffs of the Dumka Engineering College and Department of Electrical Engineering without whom effort this program is basically not possible. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. Nirmala sir, can we uh, stop? Can we end the meeting yes, now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can end the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.